Hi guys, I'm Lisa. Welcome back to the channel. This week I happened across an article from the American Psychological Association about healthy ways to deal with discrimination. I left a link in the description if you want to check it out. Today I thought I'd go through their recommendations as an employee who's been there and see if I'd make any adjustments. Recommendation 1. Focus on your strengths. Focusing on your core values, beliefs, and perceived strengths can motivate you to succeed and may even buffer the negative effects of bias. Overcoming hardship can make you more resilient and better able to face future challenges. I mean, sure, focusing on your strengths can make you more resilient, but the whole idea of using positive thinking to buffer the negative effects of the biases that you encounter every day, that missed the mark for me a little. From what I've seen, illegal discrimination can be dehumanizing. I was denied basic hygiene, and I didn't want to buffer that. I wanted to stop it. Let's take a minute to consider whether telling these people to focus on their strengths would have helped them buffer the biases that harmed them. Nope. Buffering is for things you can tolerate. Something happened to me that I couldn't tolerate, so I filed my complaint first, and then I focused on my strengths and how I was going to use those to stop the illegal discrimination. Knowing that I had the courage and will to stand up for myself, that was my buffer against NASA's biases. Recommendation 2. Seek support systems. One problem with discrimination is that people can internalize others' negative beliefs even when they're false. Family and friends can help counteract the toll that microaggressions and other examples of daily discrimination take. I didn't have to deal with a lot of microaggressions about my disability. My boss's hostilities were in my face. But a good support system is helpful for a lot of reasons. Some of us never even bother to report the discrimination because we don't trust our own perceptions about what happened to us. We may tell ourselves we're being too sensitive or that we deserved what happened to us for some reason. Recommendation 3. Get involved. You can get involved with like-minded groups and organizations locally and online. It can help to know other people who've had similar experiences, and connecting with those people might help you figure out how to address situations and respond to discrimination in ways you hadn't thought of before. And that's exactly why I started this channel in a nutshell. When I first started my fight, I looked around for others who had done the same thing. Most of the people that I asked for help couldn't help me very much because they had all signed non-disclosure agreements. I won my case outright, so I decided to take to YouTube and share my story with you guys in the hope of opening a dialogue that might help some people down the road. I've included some links in the description to a couple of places that you might want to check out online. The Fed Soup Forum, Federal Employees, You Be the Judge, is mostly a forum for EEO professionals to communicate with each other, but the good ones are still willing to help employees in a pinch. I don't see a lot of support there per se, but it is a good place to get pointers from professionals if you can convince them to help you. If nothing else, being able to convince those people to help you is really good practice for the rest of the EEOC process. There are also a couple of good Facebook groups out there that I want to talk about. FedEmps Fight EEOC Abuses is a forum for federal sector employees who are currently fighting EEOC battles of their own. If you're pro se in the federal sector, this is definitely a forum you should know about. In the private sector, the Facebook group Discrimination Law Advocates is a decent place to ask general questions, like if you're not sure whether something that happened to you is illegal, or if you need help finding an attorney. Not everybody who asks a question there is going to get help, but I have seen more help coming there than a lot of other forums. Recommendation 4. Help yourself think clearly. Being the target of discrimination can stir up a lot of strong emotions and trigger physiological responses. Try to check in with your body before reacting. Slow your breathing or use other relaxation exercises to calm your body's stress response. Then you'll be able to think more clearly about how you want to respond. Breathing can definitely help, but I needed more than that. I had a whole pocket full of little parlor tricks that my therapist taught me to deal with stress. These may sound stupid, but they got me through some rough days. Like forcing myself to smile in the car on my way to work every morning. Smiling for five minutes, even when you don't mean it, signals your brain to release feel-good chemicals. So I'd force myself to smile on the way to work, and by the time I got there, I was usually feeling pretty good for real. And I had another one when I was going through periods of self-doubt or shame. When those feelings get triggered, most of us just kind of pull into ourselves and we sort of shrink. So just sitting up and claiming the space around you can give you a huge confidence boost, and it can really ease anxiety. Recommendation five is don't dwell. People often get stuck on one episode of discrimination and end up ruminating over what they should have done. In a calmer moment, 
come up with a plan for how you might respond. I mean, this sounds good, but the trick is getting yourself from ruminating to calm in the first place. Neuroscience says that it's harder for us to engage in rumination when we're mentally occupied in what's going on right now in the present. Now, a lot of people use prayer and meditation to cultivate mindfulness, and those things work. I used them a lot, but I also had a neuroscience parlor trick for that. I call it mental vlogging. It's sort of narrating whatever is happening around me in the moment, and doing that takes up the mental space in my head that I was using to worry about the future before. Right now, I'm sitting here in my basement. It's dark. I've got these two bright lights in front of me. I can't see very well because there's glare on my glasses, but I know the camera's out there somewhere. <laughs> it may not be the best YouTube content I've ever created, but it is a good way of getting grounded in the present. Doing that usually calms me down enough to take APA's advice and think about what I'd like to do going forward. Recommendation 6. Seek professional help. Discrimination is difficult to deal with and is often associated with symptoms of depression. Psychologists are experts in helping people manage symptoms of stress and depression and can help you find healthy ways to cope. You can find a psychologist in your area using APA's locator that I've linked to in the description. If you're like me, you don't like to think of yourself as a victim, but as a point of fact, we are victims. We're on our way to being survivors, but that is a long trip down a hard road. Each of us has to find our own way through it, and it helps to have people in your corner who know you and can help you find yours. The important thing is to find someone who knows you, who can be objective and honest about your situation. The great thing about being part of a community is that we don't all have bad days at the same time. So if you're down, reach out. Chances are someone out there is in a better state of mind. That's the dream anyway. So you guys hang in, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you soon. Life smart.